Hello crafters, welcome to Creative Home with G and today's video. Today's video is one that was highly requested by many, many people. Um, I posted pictures of these altered tins on Facebook probably about a month and a half ago, maybe a month. Um, it, it is the steampunk, steampunk altered tin and this is a little uh, fudge tin which I've altered and this is a round tin which I altered. Now um, most of the metal embellishments I'm going to be using today are ones sold in my store so there'll be a link to my store in the comments that's createdhomewithg.com and most of the wooden embellishments I'm using today in fact all bar some little cogs which I'll show you um, are from fernleydesigns.com and they're a UK based company like myself but we do ship internationally so um, those are those two tins that I did that you've seen and that and you guys want me to do one on video for you so I'm going to alter this tin and I chose to get a bigger tin because I think it'd be easier for you to see so I'm going to paint this tin the lid and the bottom half just the outside you can obviously um, put paper on the inside you could paint it if you wanted to um, but I'm going to gesso this tin now I won't bore you with the, the gesso bit I'll just gesso it and uh, come back but in regards to the decorating I have been asked not to speed it up so the decorating process I'm just going to decorate now I am going to be using a combination of um, E6000 which is a super glue so if you don't have E6000 and you're based in the UK then you can use a, a, a quick drying ad adhesive um, a super glue uh, um, gorilla glue that type of thing and I'm also going to be using hot glue um, just so that you know those those other things you'll need so apart from your metal embellishments and your cogs you're only going to need gesso and then we'll use some acrylic paints when we when we get to the uh, painting stage but uh, I will do that all in normal time so this video may be a lot longer than my traditional videos because I try and keep my videos under 15 minutes so this may be quite a long video but I'm, I'm listening to you guys you want this to be um, in real time so that's what I'm giving you so let me gesso this and the bottom and I'll be right back right crafters as you, as you can see this is um, given two coats and now it's not a perfect coat I'm not worried about that because obviously it's going to get more treatment now I was going to um, paint some of these beforehand just to save on time but as I didn't know how many I was going to need um, I didn't really want to paint a holy pup and then not use them because I don't always use my cogs for mixed media kind of steampunk projects so and think and I, the last two projects I did I didn't paint these first those two tins I showed you at the beginning of the video I didn't paint them first and then I had to go back in and paint them the white then I had to paint them the other two cut the other colors I used because it was um it's obviously the, the, it was difficult because of all the all the little nooks and crannies so it might be I may go back to just you know gluing them back on then painting them afterwards because doing it this way it's just going to make this video um, long and you know it's, it's going to be long enough already so I think I'll probably just do that and then having the paint on the back is also going to interrupt with the the E6000 as well so I think I might glue them down and then um, paint them so as you can see I'm just using the E6000 and this is the clear one if I run out of the clear I'm going to have to use my the white one I have and I'm just going to put the cogs wherever I want them but I want them to so they look like they actually work as if they were mechanically able to work so I'm interlocking them different sizes there's no right or wrong way I am going to be using quite a few cogs because I mean cogs and machinery are all is all um, 
is the main part of steampunk. It's metal. And the colour you choose to um, make this, you know, to, you know, to turn this into, again, is personal preference. I'm not too sure what colour. I might go down the, the metallic roots, the silvers and the golds, just to give it that um, mechanical look, so to speak. I've got some other wood embellishments from Fernley, which I may use. I love I love these corner pieces from Fernley, so I may put those in these two corners here. These are the same corners I used on the smaller tin, and I use them as feet. I'll leave a link for Fernley Designs below. You will not be sorry with their product. And they are very, very good prices. Okay, let's bring it over. I've also got a whole heap of things from my store, things that are sold in my store. So I have keys and cogs, pen nibs, so many different um, embellishments and elements that I can add to this. And I've got them in the in the silver and the white because obviously once it's all painted, the the colour is going to make any difference. Arrows, clock hands. Let me just show you the um, the variation in cogs that I have. I have other versions that are listed, but these are the ones that I've taken out for myself. And there's another couple. Um, so I have I've, I've currently got all of these in stock, plus a wooden version and another two versions in the bronze. So check those out if you can. Straighten that. I mean that that's a corner piece, but I can straighten that out and use that. Got all these different corner embellishments that I can put over the top. Okay, let's let's paint these um these cogs. Bits, bits and you know bits of the video like this where I'm just painting I will fast forward because obviously it's just repetitive but whenever I come to adding something I won't fast forward that bit just this these parts here that are repetitive there's no point in keeping them um, in real time and then now I'm just going to add here some of these metal embellishments and again, I'm just using the E6000. The reason I use a super glue rather than a hot glue, and I do use hot glue on occasion, um, it's just because it's it makes things last longer. Once this glue dries, these things aren't going anywhere. It's so like I say, if you can get hold of a Gorilla Glue or a decent, strong glue, then you'll be well away. So what I'm doing now is I'm sticking my embellishments on top of my, um, my wooden embellishments and again all personal preference you put these where you want them but I do like to overlay things I will be using things in my stash. I've got a couple of keyholes and things that I might use. Just 
gotta make sure that these things are dry and not move them too much. These metal embellishments I'm using here are available in store. And then we are gently going to paint over the top of these things you could let it you know set for an hour or so before you paint them but this video is going to be quite long anyway so I'm trying to get it done for you I have a question for you crafters at this point how many of you at this point are thinking that looks nothing like what he showed us at the beginning of the video tell me in the comments now please okay crafters now we are going to move on to the black gesso and I'm not going to put this on a full coat everywhere I am just going to brush over it and I'm just using one of my little paint brushes and in fact this is my fan brush I do like to use a fan brush for this particular part when I'm doing these tins because I don't want solid colour. I don't mind getting blobs of solid colour in places, but this isn't the only colour that I'm going to be adding. Okay, just Try to that. give you a couple of tips, crafters, because I'm using a hot um, a heat tool, one, I wouldn't use it for too long because it'll heat up the metal which then slows down the drying of the glue and two it can warp this metal and um, this lid so I wouldn't use a heat tool for long periods of time okay now, now I've, I've got, got a paint tray and I've got my gold metallic um, paint which I think I have one open already so that must be, my, that must be a new one I have my gold, my silver and my copper metallic paint. Now these are ones that I get from Poundland, so they are a pound each and I actually really like them. Do I have one of these open as well? Where are you? Where are you? Where you are? I don't like to open one if I've already got one open. It's pointless. Oh, and I've got a blob on my, uh, on my board there, never mind. Okay, so obviously I'm going to need three paint brushes. So we'll start with that gold as I've got it here already. And I'm going to go over the same way I did with the black. dry let's put him back in his place the reason I like to use these smaller paintbrushes because they get in all the nooks and crannies
Now one thing in regards to this stage, when I dry things, I will let the heat tool um, split the paint because I give, I think it gives it a really good effect. Let me show you on this one here. If you look closely here, the paint has split and bubbled and that's the effect that I want to give because I actually think it really gives an extra something to the piece. Be careful because it will warp. Okay, another paintbrush. Let's move on to the copper. And I actually just buy my paintbrushes from Poundland. I actually buy makeup brushes because you end up getting, you know, quite a large pack for a pound. And I've even seen them on eBay where you can get like packs of 20 for a couple of pounds. And as I don't worry about, you know, keeping them for too long, if they get ruined, I just throw them away. And obviously don't forget, I'm gonna go around the edges again with white paint. So, um, and then I will give it this same treatment. Okay, another paintbrush. And let's use the silver. And now I'm just going to go back to each of the colors and build up the layers. Zoomed you in, Crafter, because I wanted you to see the, the blistering. And now what I'm doing, Crafters, is doing exactly the same thing to the sides of the base. Starting off with the black. And then going in with the other colours. So hopefully you can see the blistering and the bubbling and I think that just gives it a really, you know, it just adds to the aging of it, it just makes it look older. So I've given the base the same treatment as I gave the lid, so that's now done. And then if you want to go over some of your, um, your lid with any other colours, just need to do down the sides because I didn't do that earlier. Just going to give these sides the same treatment, the same four colours. And there's texture on the lid as well. There's blistering here and up here. But that is exactly what I did. But I just used the greens. With this one I used a green. I went over it with gesso, then I went over it with a dark green, then I went over it with the gold and the red and the copper as you can see down the side here and these are those corners that i was telling you about i use them as feet on this one and as you can see all i do is i just heat set it give it the crackle give it the bubbling and i really like the way they turn out so i'll have some pictures at the end of all three of them i hope this helps you um as i say most of the embellishments used today were from my store so if you want to head over and grab some of the embellishments um, and then you know create one of these yourself I'd love to see what you've created come to create home with G on Facebook and share it with us in fact come and share any of your projects we want to see them um, thank you very much for joining me today crafters and I will see you again very soon take care now bye bye